This is a Witch Space Special Report. I'm Commander Burr. A fair few months ago, before the details of the fleet carrier functionality were fully known, the team behind the Fleetcom Elite Dangerous community and organisers of the Distant Worlds expeditions began formulating a plan to test the viability of the new carriers as the basis of a support mechanism for explorers, travellers or anybody out in the wider galactic arena. With the announcement of more carrier details in the March livestream and then the initial public beta test of the system in April a better idea of the carriers eventual functionality could be gained and the plan began to coalesce into what is now the DSSA or Deep Space Support Array. Like any good emergent gameplay plan it is quite simple in form but complex and challenging in execution. It also has far reaching consequences for the future of the Elite Dangerous Galaxy literally and figuratively. The plan which has no end point and no timescale for its execution calls for a network of support carriers to be placed throughout the galaxy with at least one carrier being placed in each galactic region. Some regions towards the core even have a specification for up to 4 carriers because of the star density and depth of the galaxy at those points. Each carrier will have a minimum repair facility on board pitched at a reasonable price but modules fitted to the carrier over and above that are optional should the owner of the massive vessel so desire and any carriers loaned to the initiative will serve for a minimum of one year staying in a fixed location. The effort of moving and maintaining a carrier so far away from literally everything else in Elite Dangerous is no small task for anyone and it's expected and indeed encouraged that the movement of a single individual carrier be a community event in and of itself. Indeed Commander Eagle 131 of our very own Burr Pit Squadron is donating a carrier to the effort and as I speak these words is in the early stages of planning group mining operations to fuel the carrier before it leaves and recruiting willing souls to travel out with the carrier once they launch into the game. As it builds the arrays locations will be added as galactic mapping project points of interest and added to the Elite Dangerous star map and it's also expected to be the basis of the Distant Worlds 3 expedition. It's even anticipated that with the expected future expansions in the game the DSSA initiative could be the start at least of a greater colonisation of the rest of the galaxy with the eventual establishment of linked ground installations and other facilities going forward. When finished there will be over 50 of these carriers permanently stationed at least one in every region of the galaxy. A singular community event within the galaxy of Elite Dangerous that is itself made up of individual community events. The Deep Space Support Array is without a doubt one of the most epic undertakings in the history of Elite. A game with already more than its fair share of epic undertakings. The Elite Dangerous Galaxy is a huge place. It will always be a huge place but with the installation of the DSSA it will mean that any explorer that wishes to make use of the network will be free to do so. Gaining a respite from the unending black of the void and finding themselves slightly less alone if only for a short while. If you want to lend a hand or indeed a carrier to the initiative you can get involved via the links in the description below. The carrier system itself is expected to launch into the game in June and carriers looking to join the array will start leaving Colonia and the bubble almost immediately thereafter. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.